Welcome to our first video on Visual Engine Construct 3. Although not free and being commercial, Construct is a very friendly engine that can get you into making your own game in no time. The purpose of this series is to follow the same lines of development of a platformer game across several engines to show the differences between each workflow, and thus weigh advantages and disadvantages of using them. We have already started it with the G-Develop, Defold, and now Construct. We will probably also include another popular engine Gato. There so, in this tutorial, we will use the same set of art assets for all platforms. In this video, we will start to take a look at setting the bases for the platformer. Creating a basic first level from a tile map, collisions, and a player with an idle animation able to move and jump through the level. Let's construct our game. First thing first. Let's create an empty project. Since we are dealing with a pixel art project and Construct 3 allow us to define right from the start viewports and that we want a pixel perfect game, let's set it right to be of retro style, and the viewport should be of 320 in width and 160 in height. Click Create to continue. Once in the engine, in the right pane, under the layer option, let's rename the existing layer to background, and let's create a new layer by right-clicking anywhere the layer dialog box. Set it to be added on the top, and let's name it Game. Now, in the main scene view, right-click in the canvas and select the option Insert New Object. In the Object Creation window, look for the Object Tile Map and select it. In the Name field, we are naming our Level Tile Map. Click Insert to close. Click on the canvas to place the Tile Map. As soon as you do so, you can see that you have been taken to the Construct's built-in graphic editor, where you can see a default Tile Map. In the top bar, click on the button Open, which will open the File Manager. Look for your Tile Set in your hard drive. In our case, we are going to use the same castle tileset as in all the tutorials. Once loaded, you don't have to do anything else, so, you can just close the window. Back to Construct Scene View, on the bottom of the left pane, you can see that you have the options to configure the tile map parameters, like pixel width and height, borders, and offsets. In our case, our tile map is a 16 by 16 pixel size, with no borders and no offsets. In the right pane, you can see that we have our tile set displayed and that it can be selected by tiles. You can zoom in or out just like in Construct with the Alt mouse wheel. You can select any tile by clicking on it or any set of tiles by clicking and dragging it. To paint the tile on the canvas, just select the paint tool on the menu on the top of the tile map interface and paint it across the canvas. Now, let's add some collisions to be able to block out the level and to avoid our player falling through the level or crossing walls like a ghost. Double click on any tile and you will be taken to the editor window. Normally, the editor will open already set to the collision editing. If it would not be the case, then click on the button in the left menu. You can adjust the collision by moving the collision points. Repeat the operation for all the tiles that you want to have collision enabled. Once finished, right-click on the tile map in the canvas, and select the option Add Behavior. Select the solid option. 
This will make all the tiles with the collision box to be solid in there so, the player will not be able to move through them. Now, let's create our player. Right click anywhere on the canvas, and select the option insert sprite. Name it physic player. Click on the canvas to place it. Again, the graphic editor will open. Click on the resize button on the top menu. Set the size to be 16 by 16. Choose any color, and then select the bucket tool and paint the area. Close the editor. Right click again the sprite and then add behavior. Look for the option platformer. Run the game by clicking on the run button on the top menu. You can see that we have total control of our sprite. The speed and the jumps can be somewhat very exaggerated, but we will fine tune it next. In the left pane, under the platformer behaviors, look for the option max speed and reduce it to around 150, or any other value that could serve you. Let's decrease the acceleration and deceleration to 500 and 600. Let's cut down the jump strength to 200 and the fall speed to 300. Let's run the game again to see the results of the fine tuning. The jump is too low now. Let's adjust it until we are happy with the type of jump that we feel fits our game. In our case, it will be around 300. Let's add now sprite visuals. Right click on the canvas and select a new sprite and name it player sprite. Click on the canvas to place it. The graphic editor will open again. In this case, we are not going to draw but import the animations for our sprite. In the right pane, you can see a dialog named animation with an entry called default. Right click on it and rename it to idle. Below the main canvas, you can see another window name idle frames. Right click on it and select the option import frames. A new dialog box will open to ask where you want to import from. In our case, our frames are split by PNG files, so we will choose the option from files. Select in your disk the sprites associated with the idle animations and select all of them by shift clicking. Nothing appears in the central window. This is because, by default, there is an empty frame zero that is automatically created by construct. Right click on it and delete it. You should now see the first frame of the idle animation. Click again on the animation name on the right pane. Below, you will see some proprieties appearing. One of them is the speed of the animation which is currently 5. Type in 6 which will be more suited for the number of frames used. Check the loop checkbox, to make sure that our animation will always run over and over again. Right click again on the animation name, and select the option preview the animation. Close the dialog. In the right pane menu, click on the image points button, and then right click on the origin button. In the new dialog box, select the option quick assign and then to bottom. This will make the origin of the sprite to be in the middle bottom edge of the character. Just to be sure, or in case we add more animations, let's right click again the origin point and then select apply to all animations. Close the graphic editor. You can see our character floating on the canvas. If we run the game, we can see that nothing is happening. 
This is because the player script is still only a graphical set without any behavior. To change this and before creating any event, we have to make some changes to physic player. So double click on it. Quick assign the origin of the sprite to be on the bottom. Right click again on the image points and then select add new image point. Right click on it and rename to sprite and set it to be on the bottom of the sprite too. Exit to the scene view. Right click on the player sprite and add new behavior. From the list of behaviors, select the option pin. This will help us glue together our player sprite to our physic player. Time to make some coding. Above the central window, click on the events view for your project. In our case, still being called event sheet one. Click in the option add new event and then select the system option. Drag down to the option on start layout, which makes sure that the event will be run as soon as the layout is being started by construct. Click on the add action and then select the player sprite and click next. In the search bar type pin and select the option pin to image point. Click next to continue. In the next interface, in the dialog, pin 2, select the object you want to be pin 2, which will make the position of the object modify based on the position of the pin 1. Select the physic player, as it is the one that we want to control the player character. In the image point between quotes type sprite, which is the name we defined in the physic player edition. Click done to finish and let's run the game. We can see that our player sprite follows correctly the movements of the physic player. With the physic player selected, in the left pane, look for the option initially visible and uncheck it. This will make the physic player invisible during gameplay. Run again the game, and we can move through our very small level. We can walk left and right, we can jump. We hope that you have liked this video. If it has been the case, consider subscribing, giving a like, and clicking on the notification button. If you have any questions, problems, or comments, don't hesitate in putting a comment and we will answer as fast as we could. See you in the next video game developers.